Hey, let's do some live trades. Hey guys, we're back. I apologize for the lighting in here. I just have a basement window and I didn't want to get up and turn my um, my overhead lamp on. So uh, yeah, just let me just dig right in here. Uh, today we've got a little bit of a live trade going. Um, there were about six, I think, of the top runners, and I just kind of wanted to demonstrate how I got into this and why uh, instead of the others. So if you go to the top runners and losers here, you can see that I was looking at these top six. Um, they were the ones that were more than uh, you know, a reasonable amount up for the day with a reasonable float and a reasonable price. So uh, AULT and AWIN are lower price. I don't really like those uh, too much, but this one just had enough strength that I really, really liked it. Um, and basically, I just kind of looked at the high time frames here. I looked at the daily time frame. You can see it's obviously a, a downtrend, so it's not something I want to marry long term. Uh, but we did have a nice little curl at the bottom. We broke over the moving average and all that good stuff. Didn't really see that in real time. Um, but you can see that the entry is right above there. So it was a good spot to start looking. I was looking at the one hour time frame, however. Uh, and this is really what I was looking for. I was looking for a break over these, all these local highs here. I got in a little bit later in the morning and that's okay. Um, you know, just went into the lunchtime hour and typically when this happens, we see these massive runs. Now this is a low float stock. Uh, it's about 10 and a half million shares. And this isn't something that I primarily trade. It was just one that I happened to look at because I only really got time to trade once today. Um, so as you can see, uh, we've got a good history of volatility, a good history of violence, and we've had this heavy consolidation with no volume. And then we see this immediate release gap to the upside, and it just happens to be in the top runners for the day. Um, so it's not anything specific about this company. It just happens to be where the volume went today. So in order to identify that, uh, we can look at the lower time frames. And so if I just kind of work my way down through the 30 minute time frame, you can see here we had this gap up with a direction, uh, a candle in that direction, sorry, and then a pullback and then a push to the upside. So this is really what I was trading is a short-term retracement after a break and a gap up over previous highs. So if I look at the five minute here, you can see uh, we've got a nice little pop right here. And if I draw a Fib retracement, you'll see these two lines uh, that are right here, the 50 and 61.8, these two white lines right here. That's all I was trading. I just traded the impulse, the retrace, and the other ones just didn't break up. So. Uh, all I did is draw a fib. I drew my 50 to 61.8% level. You can see that we uh, came there and we were above the moving average at the time. So we had that double support confluence. And then if I kick it down to the two minute here, which is where I actually looked for the entry, um, out of that setup, okay, I saw higher highs, higher lows, higher high, higher low. And right after this higher low, we get this engulfing to the upside with minimal risk right here. This is what I like to see. Uh, this risk here is about one cent, maybe two cents. So I was okay with that. And I already locked 75% um, of my position. I had a full buy size of $120 here. Uh, now that was pretty aggressive for this size account, but I was very confident in setup. Uh, but immediately locked 75% at this level right here, this two, uh, 0.278 for the day. And all I did to do that, to identify this target, is you see this massive sell-off right here? This is institutional selling or some sort of bank that triggered a stop loss. So what they do is they can't put all their orders in at once when they're trying to short something or buy something, go long. Uh, so what they'll do is they often run at these levels of su uh, supply and demand. And this, in this case, it's a supply zone, right? But it is a heavily shorted stock, so we're okay, right? Um, so what they'll do is they'll buy, uh, they'll, they'll open their position with partial fills, right? Because again, they can't put all their shares in at one time. Uh, in this case, they were looking to short it, okay? So you see this massive sell off here. And then typically when that happens, they want the price to come back to that same level so they can finish filling their orders. And then if it does come back and it's appropriate, uh, if their outlook is still the same, which in this case, it looked like he tried to defend it a little bit. Uh, it was a little bit low and not necessarily something we like, but you can see that that's where uh, they tend to fill the rest of their orders. Now, in this case, it looks like they just kind of gave up because it failed the the uh, the release, right? So they put some orders in here for shorts. They put some orders in here for shorts. And then it failed to break this uh, demand because obviously other institutional buyers are stepping in um, to capitalize on that. So they consumed this guy and he probably got in a lot of trouble with his boss. Uh, <laughs> you know, and these, these low floats, it's typically like one or two larger firms. Um, that just have these algos. And you can see these are zone recovery bots. Uh, they're equal size walls on both sides. And that's just a strategy that they can use to long and short um, simultaneously for breakouts like this. And you can see there's a few of them sitting on here. Um, 
And that's all I did. I just I identified those specific things. Uh, I kind of knew that we had good potential here to blast through that level because this guy didn't seem like he was willing to defend it. Um, and I caught that push off that support level, which in this case was the moving average, as well as a micro retrace. So if I draw a fib right here, uh, you can see it came down to the 50 to 61.8% level there and didn't fail that. So uh, I was pretty confident that when we saw the pushback up there, we had multiple factors in our favor. Um, so all I had to do was just let it run up into this... Uh, uh, this supply zone to see if he was going to sell off some more. And in this case, I, I didn't want to fight him for liquidity, so I just sold 75% of the shares right there. No questions asked. Uh, you can see the, the realized PL here is $2.70. That's because I realized a loss of about $9 overnight. Uh, I took a, a risky overnight position and it just didn't work out. But that's okay. It's equity. I don't really care too much about 10 bucks, right? And we got it back again today in one trade. So I still have. Uh, about $36 worth of equity left in this position, and I have a 60% sell order queued up. Now, this is 60% of what I bought, which is a total of 15% of that total position. So since I sold 75%, I have 25% of that initial position remaining. So selling 60% of that is a, a lesser position. So I'm only really looking to sell um, just over half of this position when we get another pump. So I'm not too worried about uh, you know, the specifics of the trade, but this is just how I prefer to manage the positions. I try to sell 75% uh, of the whole position, 60% of what's left after that, of that 25%. That's about 15% total. Um, sorry, I misspoke before. And then I'll sell the last 100% on that third impulse, and I'll just move the stops up as they go, uh, just to make sure that the price doesn't fall back down on me. But I just kind of wanted to, st uh, to jump in and share that really quick. Uh, I do plan on making a longer video to, to kind of talk about more of the dividend stuff and the position management aspect of things. You can see here that Tesla is down 9.63% and Johnson & Johnson is down 7.8%. I don't care. <laughs> it's okay. I'm not trading the noise, uh, the P&L in these positions. I'm trading the dividends, and the dividends will eventually offset the cost of these shares. So I'm not too worried about what the P&L is on my open position because every time I collect a dividend, realistically, it brings my cost basis down for each share. So... Uh, eventually, these will all be free shares, and I don't have to worry about seeing red or green in my portfolio in those positions. I'm only caring about these speculative trades like KLXE is a long-time swing. Uh, AULT is a long, it's a short-term day trade. Okay, those are the only two positions in this portfolio that I really care about the P&L on, and I'm just managing them tightly with defined risk and defined profit potential, and I have a specific plan for each. So sorry to cut this one short, but I just wanted to pop in and show you guys this. Um, I'll just continue to follow this one up and we'll see how it ends up in the Breakdowns channel. Thank you and I hope you have a good day.